Ready? Yeah. Take one. <laughs> Hello everyone. I've got a very sweet and special guest with me today and we're going to be bringing y'all some fun crafty projects. So stay tuned. Hello my darling friends, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to see you all. I'm excited to spend some time together today. I'm especially excited about my beautiful special guest that we have with us today. This is my gorgeous granddaughter Brecken. She is going to help us do some cute crafty projects today. So we've got a patriotic project to share with y'all and then I've got some really exciting news that I can hardly wait to share with y'all. So stay tuned to the end so I can share my exciting news with everyone. Are you ready to craft, Miss Brecken? Yep. You ready to craft? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go do it. Let's go make some fun projects. We're gonna kick off our crafty cuteness today with this sweet little Uncle Sam cutout that I cut out on my M1, my X-Tool M1 laser cutter. And we're gonna talk more about my laser cutter in just a little bit. But for right now, we're gonna talk supplies. So we're gonna need this cute thing. And I cut this out with all these fun little parts so we could make it somewhat 3D-ish. I will have this entire set linked in the description box for y'all if you're interested. I know it's kind of late for this season. Season, but my granddaughter was here and I really wanted to work on a fun project with her and I thought this would be perfect to work on with my grandchildren. And so if you've got grandchildren, this might be a fun one for y'all to work on together as well. So we're just going to start out by tracing some of our components here. We're going to do some toll painting, y'all. Do, do, do any of you remember toll painting from the early 90s, the early, yeah, early 90s, be the late 80s, early 90s. I used to love toll painting. It was, it was actually one of those projects that first launched my crafty creativeness as I really got into toll painting and just fell in love with it, but I haven't done it in years, y'all. So that's what we're going to do with these pieces is we're just going to do some good old fashioned toll painting on these. And if you're not sure what toll painting is, it's basically just taking wood shapes and bringing them to life by using paint and a variety of painting techniques such as some shading and whatnot. So Brecken and I just started out by tracing our elements, some of our elements onto this so that we would have some paint lines and know where to put our specific colors and whatnot. So we first traced our arms on and then just traced a few of the other elements on and then we came back in with a ruler and or we'll come back in with a ruler and create the bottom part of Uncle Sam's jacket. I was not super precise with drawing the center or drawing my lines here on the center. I sort of just guesstimated and eyeballed what the center was and then I came in with my ruler and drew these lines because I did want that jacket to have some nice crisp sharp lines. So now we get to jump into the fun part and just start painting. So Brecken and I are going to first lay down our base coats on all of the components here of our Uncle Sam. And this color that I am using for the jacket is a blend that I created and I will have that in the description box for y'all and I will also have the colors that Brecken used on hers because she decided Decided to use some of some different colors she kind of wanted to just make this her own which I thought was so cute and so sweet so we'll start by painting the jacket and then just kind of move into painting a bunch of the other components so y'all I hope you just enjoy kind of watching Brecken and I create and craft together getting the initial base coat down on his jacket, I did come in and start painting some of the accessory pieces. So I'm going to just jump in and start painting the jacket arms. These are the little, like, I guess we could just call these our little 3D components. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get mine painted while Brecken finishes painting her jacket. Uh, 
have this jacket sleeve is actually connected to the flag that my Uncle Sam is going to be holding. Brecken and I have two different variations here and my Uncle Sam is holding a flag. I did come in and just kind of draw out the lines of where my shirt jacket will end and the flag and the flag pole begin. So that's what I'm doing here so that I can go ahead and get the blue part of his jacket painted in. Brecken and I were working away on our little projects together one of the things that I found fascinating is how quiet she was so y'all you have to know my granddaughter but she's a chatterbox and rarely stops talking however when we sat down to craft together and paint together we also did some watercolor painting together she was so focused and so dialed in I could hardly get her to have a conversation with me so you're not going to hear a whole lot from her in this because I don't know if she's just so focused or if she got a little camera shy here so okay I've finished my sleeve on this piece and Brecken is getting hers finished up so now we're going to go ahead and move on to painting in the face part of our Uncle Sam and I um, wasn't super careful with my lines here because we've got that little 3D piece that's going to separate our hat from the face so I was a little messy with this but Brecken she was a lot more precise she took really took her time to make sure she did a good job <laughs> One thing I will just jump in and say really quick here is that Brecken and I did put two coats of all of our base colors down on each of the parts and the pieces here, but I did not want to subject y'all to watching us do two coats of paint because I think you get the idea here, right? <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and continue painting all of the pieces and the parts. I came in and painted my hat just a smidge darker than the jacket. It's sort of the same blue tone but it's it is a little bit darker I mixed it just a little differently so my so Brecken and I will go ahead and finish painting a lot of our parts and pieces and getting some of that done and then we've got a really fun element that we're going to add to our Uncle Sam that I think you guys are really gonna love so stay with us and I hope y'all keep watching So as we were working on our pieces, I told Breck and I said, I think we need to go the next level here. So what we did was we came in and drew our mustache line right onto our Uncle Sam face. And then I decided for the beard, it would be really fun to give this beard a lot of texture and just make it really pop off of the piece. So we came in with some of this uh, drywall spackling compound it's it's I can't remember exactly what brand this is but I will have it linked in the description box but I love this because it goes on pink but when it's fully dry it dries white and that's how you kind of know it's dry so we just started using this compound this uh, drywall compound filler stuff I'm not exactly sure what it's called <laughs> I'm just gonna call it stuff for right now <laughs> But we just came in and started building our beards up and at first I was having a little bit of a hard time getting it to stick to the wood but then I got a brilliant idea grabbed my paintbrush and I wet my paintbrush and then I started patting it on with the wet paintbrush and this really helped shape and mold it but it also helped it adhere to the wood a lot better. This part was so much fun. Brecken and I got our fingers dirty and we were just really getting into this. We had a good time creating the beards and y'all I think they turned out fantastic. This was a fun fun little addition to add to this to just take it to that next level. where I got the idea to bring in a paintbrush and start using my paintbrush to shape and mold this and I had my outline drawn here so that did help too so I as I was building this beard up I tried to keep it within my you know the shape and keep it that nice beautiful rounded beard shape the paintbrush really did help it made a big difference and it was a lot easier to get the texture that I was hoping for the texture that I was looking for by using using the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. 
Brecken and I did spend a little bit of time working on the beards. <laughs> we were having fun and I really wanted to build mine up to give it a lot more texture on our piece as well as some dimension. So we just kept working, kept building, and then after we got them completely built and and um, all worked onto our piece, we did leave these her and I actually went shopping. She wanted some flowers that grandma had in her garden. And so I took her shopping. So we gave these about three or four hours to dry before we moved on to our next steps. After we got our beards completely built up and shaped the way that we were happy with, I just came in with my paintbrush and some clean water to kind of touch this up. It it was a little bit messy. It left a few speckles on the um on our piece, but it also left a little bit of, you know, just some messiness. <laughs> so I was able to come in with my paintbrush and really just clean this up by using some pure clean water. Oh gosh, y'all, I just love how this turned out. I love the beard. I think this just added so much to the piece. So Brecken and I got back from shopping and our beards still were not fully dry, completely dry. So we decided to just move on and start painting some of the other elements on our piece here. So we started out by painting the pants and our first original thought was to give our pants some fun stripes. So we drew stripes on and we both attempted to paint the stripes individually and it was causing a little bit of frustration we we weren't really liking that idea so much so then we just came in and fully covered the pants and then we will come back in and add some stripes later so we continued just painting it did take two coats of this because we're using a, a pretty it's a pretty it's it's not a fully pure white but we were using an ivory white so it did take two coats to fully cover this part of our uncle sam and then once we got our pants done <laughs> i don't know what reckon was doing right there <laughs> once we got our pants done we came in and started painting our beards okay y'all so originally we both were like well let's just paint our beards like the color of our hair or our normal hair and then I was like oh I don't think that's gonna work too well so because it just didn't look quite right and Uncle Sam had a gray beard I don't know what the two of us were thinking maybe we were just having too much fun and just we're getting we were just letting our creativity do whatever at this point so I do come back in at the very end and change the beard color on mine to a gray beard and then I also add in a little bit of white to just make it look a little more enhanced point we're just continuing painting all of the elements of our uncle sam there's a lot of pieces to this when i first cut it out i was like oh this this will be pretty easy it won't be time consuming at all but then as brecken and i started painting and we were working on our pieces we were like oh yeah there's a lot of pieces here <laughs> so it was a little bit time consuming but we were just having a good time just really enjoying crafting together so now i'm going to work on my flag as brecken is working on her stars so to cover my flagpole i came in with just a really pretty silver color and then I will come in and paint the flag a red because we do have some numbers to add to this flag later and Brecken is using a really pretty gold to paint her stars she did want her stars to look a little bit rusty which we both ended up doing but it was her idea to do that and I loved it I thought it was a fantastic idea so we're just working on we're both kind of working on our own thing here and just painting 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 away Harris 
where I come in and start painting my flag this really pretty red color. So this is a barn red mixed with burnt umber because I really wanted to deepen that red and give it more of an aged antique -y look. I'm not a super fan of red in general. It's not one of my favorite colors. So when I do paint things with red, I really do try to deepen the red a lot so that it looks a little more aged and antique -y. Bracken and I are going to go ahead and add some eyes to our cute little Uncle Sam here. And to do this, we are just using the end of our paintbrush, which we dipped in some paint and then holding the paintbrush perfectly up and down, we just come in, dip the brush in the paint, and then dab it right onto the face. And it gives us these nice, perfectly beautiful round eyes. I would like to thank X Tool for sponsoring today's episode. Y'all, we are loving our laser cutter. You've heard me talk about it before. We have just had so much fun with it. If you are in the market for a laser cutter, I highly recommend this one. We have the X Tool M1 cutting machine, and I think some of my favorite features about this one is first, it is a very user-friendly beginner machine. So if you are just starting out with laser cutting and you're in the market for a laser cutter, I highly recommend checking out the M1. One of my favorite features about it is the built-in camera. I love how the camera takes a picture of you, your piece of wood that you're going to cut on and then it displays that right on the screen in your design space. So as you're placing all of your components, you can see exactly where your components are going to be placed on your wood piece and exactly how they're going to cut out. So I do think that's one of my favorite features. It makes laser cutting so easy. There's also a lot of things I love about this machine. I love that it is so compact. It fits nicely in our wood shop. It doesn't take up a whole bunch of counter space. Michael actually built a special little roll away cart for ours, but if you need to put it on some counter space, it's small, it's compact, it does not take up a whole lot of room. And my third favorite thing about this laser cutting machine is the fact that it does not have to be uh, vented out a window or out a door. It has its own ventilation um, system built right into it, which is also nice and compact and it can sit easily right next to your machine. So that is also something that is really good, especially for the person that has like a shop that doesn't have windows or doors like, like us, for example. So if you are in the market, y'all, for a laser cutter and you are interested in the M1, I will have some more details listed about it in the description box for y'all and as well as a discount code that Xtool has sent to me for all of you to get a discount off your first purchase. All this talk about laser cutters is a perfect segue into my exciting news that I can hardly wait to share with y'all. I have been looking forward to this for quite some time. So a lot of you have been asking me when I'm going to have some wood cutout embellishment sets available and y'all, you don't have to wait anymore because they are now available on my website and I will have the link to my website listed in the description box for y'all. I put together several little sets. I had so much fun. There is a butterfly out my window that keeps distracting me. It's like bright, shiny object, bright, shiny object. <laughs> it's a really beautiful butterfly. Anyway, I put together several different packs, packets for y'all, several different sets for some of the seasons and just some of our specific special holidays that we all love to get creative and crafty for. I especially love the summer set that I put together for y'all. The cute, it, this set is so cute. Y'all are going to absolutely love it. It's got bees and honey jars. It's so, so cute. So y'all go check out my website for um, the link or go check my description box for the link to my website so you can go see all the sets that I have designed and put together for y'all. And if 
you purchase through the month of July from my YouTube channel, I am going to have a special discount code for y'all as well. So be sure and check the description box because it's gonna have the link to my website as well as a discount code for all of you. Okay, so I just wanna show y'all really quickly some of the, the pieces. This is what the, um, the little wood sets are going to look like when they've been cut out. Um, I didn't cut every single one of the sets out, just a couple of my favorites, so I just thought I would show them to you really quickly. So they are cut on three millimeter ply, so they're not horribly, horribly thin, like the ones that you get at Dollar Tree, or even sometimes the ones at Hobby Lobby are a little thinner than this. So we do cut these out on three millimeter pine. And this little set is so, so cute, y'all. I just love it. So you get two honey jars, you get the jar and then a cute little lid to go on the top of the jar. So there's the two little mini ones and then you get two larger ones in this set as well. There are several different little bees. We've got a couple of bees here. I like this little bee, I think it's so cute. And this one, this one is just really darling too. I hope you guys, I hope you guys can all see these okay. And then this set also comes with all kinds of fun little honey drips. There's several different honey drips that comes in this set. You get all kinds of fun things. There's a couple little beehives. There's a little heart. So this set just, it's so cute. This set just comes with quite a few different fun pieces. So check this set out too, y'all. It's on the website. And then I'll show you a couple of other ones that I did manage to get cut out because I just, I was having a little too much fun. Okay, so the heart set comes with several different shapes of hearts and you get multiples of these in the set. So um, I didn't cut all of them out. Um, but this set actually comes with, there's five different shapes here and it comes with three sizes in all five shapes. So I believe in this set you get a total of 18 or 20 pieces. I can't remember exactly what it is because some of these little hearts you get multiples of. So that's the heart set. <laughs> This floral set is probably one of my favorites as well. I really had fun drawing all of these and designing them and getting them you know, prepared in this fun set. And it comes with lots of flowers and lots of different size and shapes of centers. The flower set has 52 pieces. And y'all, the patriotic set is super fun as well. And it comes with 28 pieces. I really am excited about my cutouts, y'all, and I hope that you will go check them out. All right, so let's finish up our Uncle Sam. At this point, Brecken is no longer with me. She went to visit her auntie, my youngest daughter. They're going to spend the weekend together, which I just thought was so sweet and so fun for the kids. They were so excited. So Brecken and her brother are twins, and I don't know if I mentioned that before. So they're my two youngest grandkids, and yes, they were looking very ex they were looking very forward to going and spending the weekend with their auntie. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up our set, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on my stars here. I want to go ahead and make them look a little bit rusty. So I started out with the base coat, painting them in that really pretty gold color. And then I just came back in with a dry brush and started dabbing in a few different colors. I dabbed in some brown and then I came over that brown with a little bit lighter of a gold color. And then at the very end, I come back in and add a little bit of gold rub and buff to just give them some sparkle and some shine. Okay, y'all, so here's where I start to realize that this beard just does not look right. Uncle Sam needs to have a gray beard. So my first thought was that I would just come in and dry brush some, some silver over the top of his gray beard, but it, 
or his brown beard, but it did not actually work. So in the end, I do come back in and repaint the entire beard and the mustache with some silver paint. And then I come back and dry brush some white on it just to give it a little bit of depth and dimension. And in the meantime, I, this is where I come in and start doing some shading on all of our pieces and parts just to kind of bring them to life and give it a little extra something. So to do my shading, I do use an angle brush to do this. I really think the angle brush works the best. I wet my brush, dab just the very tip of that angle into the brush, only one corner of it. And then you just come in and with a wet brush, you do want your brush, brush to be pretty wet here. I just go along my edges and it gives this perfect blend. It kind of blends out and gives it a good gradient and creates some beautiful shading. So I do this to all of the parts and the pieces where things come together and they meet. It just kind of helps separate them and give things a little bit more depth and definitely some more dimension to this. So after I got the shading done on my flag, I felt like it was still looking a little flat. So I decided to do some splatter here, some splatters onto the flag. And I don't do splatters a whole lot to my pieces, but I thought it would really work here and be add just some funness to this. So I'm using a fan brush. Fan brushes work really well for splattering. And you do want to make sure that your paint is pretty wet when you do the splatters. So after I did my splatters, I let those dry really well. And then I could go ahead and come in and start gluing down my 1776. I am using wood glue to glue these, these pieces into place. Oh, and to paint my 1776, I used some watered down raw umber to just kind of give them that stained look. Then I decided, okay, the jacket's looking a little flat as well. So I came in, traced his arms, and then added just a little extra shading to the jacket as well. The color that I chose to do this shading is a really deep navy blue mixed with just a tiny bit of black to just really enhance it and make it pop and stand out against the blue color of his jacket. These shading, it's going to look really good underneath the arms like our little 3D pieces that we glue down. It just kind of makes them look even more popped off the piece and gives it more of a 3D look. here I just keep shading just coming in and keep shading 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 this really is an important step I feel like because it it's what really makes your piece pop and it gives this piece just a lot of character it gives it a lot of depth and it just it makes the components of each piece look a little less flat now here's where I decided to go ahead and add some stripes in so I just drew these on with a ruler so they were straight when I drew them on, but I don't have a very steady hand. So as I was painting them on, they didn't paint as straight as I would like them to. But in the end, I was like, oh, well, I kind of like it. It looks pretty cute. I thought the stripes were a good addition to his pants for sure. And y'all, here is where I have come in and completely repainted his beard gray, his beard and his mustache gray. But to give it a little bit more texture, I did come in with a dry brush and dab on a little bit of white. And I'm so glad I did this step because it really made the beard and the mustache just pop. I love how it looks in the end. I think you guys are gonna love it too. Mm -hmm. 
because the beard is so textured and it's lifted a little bit up off the piece, I had to use some hot glue to glue the mustache on because, you know, hot glue kind of has some um, thickness to it and it really helped a lot. I tried to use wood glue at first and it just didn't work because there wasn't enough thickness. So using the hot glue worked perfectly to glue the mustache down. For the rest of the pieces though, I am just using some hot glue to glue all the rest of our accessory pieces into, or not hot glue, some wood glue to glue all the rest of our accessory pieces into place. <laughs> Well, we did it, y'all. We finished this really cute Uncle Sam toll painted piece, and I love it. I think it turned out so darling. I'm really loving the beard and the mustache. So glad I decided to use the texture for this. What do y'all think? I think he came out really cute, and I'm excited to add him to my patriotic decor. project? Yeah. You feel good about it? Yeah. You should. You should be proud. I think it's gorgeous. I think it turned out fantastic. <laughs> so what are you going to do with it? I'm going to use it to decorate in my room. Yeah? Oh, I think it's going to look super good in your bedroom. Super good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had fun. I loved having you here with me. I loved having you <laughs> decorate with me. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, my dear friends. Well, I hope that y'all had fun too. And I gave you a little bit of crafty inspiration for a late patriotic decor project. It was fun hanging out and I especially loved hanging out with my sweet little assistant here. We had a really good time. Okay, friends. Well, that is it for today. So I look forward to seeing y'all again next week. Until then, take care and I will see y'all soon. Bye. Y'all don't forget to go check out the description box for the links to my website so that you can see all of our fun new crafty wood cutout embellishments. Thanks for being here, friends. Test, test, test. I'm here with my beautiful granddaughter. Ready? Yeah. Okay, action. Take one. Do you have any idea what we're gonna say? No. Nope. Me either.